Today is December 17th, 2012. My name is Teresa Beer Larson, and I'm talking with Martha Coover Anderson. Thank you for letting me join you in your home today. You're welcome. And I would like to make sure that I have your permission to record your voice in your picture today. You do. Thanks. Of course, Martha, this is part of our continuing series of oral histories of people who've grown up in Ames and have good stories about what life was like in Ames. Tell me when you were born and where. I was born on March 24th, 1926 in Boulder, Colorado. So you'll have to tell me how you got to Ames. My father was hired to come here and be in the electrical engineering department and we arrived in Ames on the fall of 1934. So you, at that point, were just a young child. Right. And um, just so everyone knows for sure, your family name is on a building at Iowa State University. Yes, it is. <laughs> okay. We can talk about that a little bit later. But tell me what your first memory of Ames might have been. Well, we came... Um, I had been in school, of course, but I started third grade here, and it was at Louise Crawford School, which is still standing, but not used as a school, of course, and um, was very surprised when I arrived to find that I was in a classroom with another full class, because they had only two classrooms working, and one was for the first and second graders, and the other was for the third and fourth graders. Was it sort of like a one-room schoolhouse? In other words, you were doing lessons and you were hearing lessons from another grade level? That's right. That would be tough for a teacher, I would think. Well, she was a very good teacher. Tell me about your classmates. Did they live in your area? Well, pretty much, yes. And uh, I don't remember a lot about my classmates at that particular time. Um, we had just moved, so I was just getting acquainted. And um, I only knew, probably, I knew one classmate, uh, Arthur Gilkey, because we had uh, known his family in Boulder, and they moved to Ames ahead of us. And uh, so that was the first family we contacted, and Art and I were the same age. Tell me where your um, home was here in Ames when you first moved here. It was at 315 Ash Avenue, and I think it has probably been torn down by now. Did you walk to school? I certainly did. And what about lunchtime? Walked home, had <laughs> lunch, and walked back. <laughs> Do you remember school... Um, of course, for the good lessons, you mentioned that you'd had good teachers at Louise Crawford. Were there any particular festivals or fun things associated with school um, as you were growing up? Well, I remember um, in the older grades, we put on uh, HMS Benefor, which was uh, a lot of fun. This was while well, this was in junior high school. And uh, we did May Day festivals with pole dancing, and, or May pole dancing. And uh, um, we did a lot of, uh, you know, Valentine boxes, all of the one things that you remember from those grades. When um, school was out in the summer or on weekends, tell me what children on Ash Avenue and the Louise Crawford School area did to have fun? Well, we took swimming lessons over in the men's gym, which was a lot of fun. And the uh, we went down to Brookside Park for some kind of a, uh, I guess it was a day camp, where we did craft work and learned about trees and so on. And uh, otherwise, we just played kick the can and hide and seek and Man on the Mountain and all the other fun games, and we were outside most of the time. So it was the kind of environment when your mom would say, go out and play today, and you might have come home for a sandwich at noon, but other than that, you were out all day. That's right. 
I was at just at the end in the spring of um, 1935 we did move from Ash Avenue to Graber Street and Graber Street is only three houses long and um, it was very interesting because uh, there was one house between us and the other Coover family in town but they lived on Storm Street because these were, this was over in the curly section of Fourth Ward. At that time, were all the streets paved? No. Oh, no. What, what was your service? Ours was paved, but uh, 13th Street wasn't even paved. Mm -hmm. And um, parking lots on the campus weren't paved. <laughs> no, it was... Uh, on a rainy day, you could get kind of muddy. Right. <laughs> I'm also talking for this series of interviews about going to school at Lewis Crawford with uh, Mr. Einer Larson. Yes, he was in the class ahead of me, and he also lived next door. <laughs> and did your families do things together, or did you do things as children together? We did as children together. We were, I mean, there was so many children in that, that neighborhood. We played together all the time. Uh, all different kinds of ages. Um, our family socially did not do too much together, but they were very, very good friends and exchanged Christmas presents and greetings. And uh, Einer's father was a an artist, and uh, among other things, he was head of the forestry department at Iowa State. But he was also a a, an artist and we have pictures one of our own backyard that he did for my parents. So we'll return to schooling for just a little bit. Um, Louise Crawford and what was the next school you attended after Louise Crawford? Welch. And what grades for that Welch? That started with fifth grade and went there through eighth grade. And that was a little bit farther west. That school does not exist anymore. That's right. It was on Sheldon, I believe, but mm -hmm. actually, I think maybe the address might have been Highland because it, well, it fronted both the two. between the two. Do you remember what the school was like when you'd walk into the school? It what? I remember you walked in and there were very broad stair steps going up, wooden floors, wooden stairs, and um, I remember the uh, fifth grade was just to the left as we went in the door, down the hall a little bit. And it was a big school after for Louise Crawford. Um, did it have a gymnasium at that time? I think a gymnasium was added a little later. Mm, okay. So you had a big playground? We had lots of playground. And we had, uh, I remember we went upstairs for an art class and I particularly liked the art class. One year we wrote and produced a puppet show, and each one of us made our own puppets, which was a lot of fun. And we had to give them names, and we just, I remember that very distinctly. We had so much fun. Were your classes very big? Do you remember at all? I would guess probably no more than 20. They were, they were not big at all. That's what educators like to have now, a smaller class size. <laughs> well, that's probably why we felt we got a good education. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the tradition had started yet at Welch in those middle grades. Someone was talking about box suppers. Had those? Oh, yes. Oh, can you tell me about that? Or well, box social? Box social, that was uh, one of the things that we did. We would, uh, the girls would make a lunch box and then we'd go and take it and there would be enough in there, and the boys would um, bid on these. Now that probably, well that may have started in uh, oh, eighth or ninth grade. Okay. Be the older grades. The older grades, where you did that. So was there a dance associated with that? Uh, yes, I believe there was, as I recall. And um, we did take dancing lessons from a uh, mother of one of the boys in our neighborhood. And she held the dance classes in her living room. And we all learned to dance, but we, it was by grades, as I recall. And then um, one of our, 
um, classmates had a recreation room in her basement. So for a long time we would go over there on Saturday nights and dance to the Lucky Strike Hour. And I remember that very distinctly. Before we leave kind of this 1930s era, I always like to ask people, in what way were you aware of the Depression? And if you were aware of it, how it might have impacted you and your family life? Well, I was aware of it because my mother actually made even made my father's shirts. Uh, and we were very careful about our clothes. I had two older brothers, um, five and seven years older than I am. But um, uh, we were very careful with how we used, we used everything until it was tattered and you couldn't wear it anymore. Were there any people coming around that needed food or help or homes due, uh, at that time period? Yes, we occasionally had uh, people come to the back door and beg for food. And Mother would generally give them a little bit. Mm -hmm. We never gave out money as far as I can remember. Mm -hmm. And I do remember my parents sending money to my grandparents, uh, who my grandfather was a minister, and uh, they just, in order to help him maintain the home, uh, mother sent money to him every week. So moving from eighth and ninth grade into high school, that meant you had to go across town. That's right. You were in the campus town and high school was downtown. And we rode the bus and we had bus tickets and uh, however there was a group of us that did not enjoy the food in the cafeteria at the high school so we would run home and if we were lucky enough we could ride back but more often we had to run back too. Uh, do you mean literally you, on well, your two feet run? Well, <laughs> walk fast. Walk fast. <laughs> just it was a quick way to get home and, and have something to eat at home. Mm -hmm. Even if it was a peanut butter sandwich, it was better than the cafeteria food. And we were not, as I think the schools are now, at least I know my children, were not allowed out of the school at noon. But we were. Mm -hmm. All times were different. Right. Let's talk about academics at Ames High. There probably were a lot of young, young teenagers who um, were connected with the university in some way. Um, fathers or parents in some way were involved with the university. So I'm guessing education was um, a prized goal? Education was very important. And um, our classes were very competitive within the classes we were competitive. And we had 11 of our class out of 100, about 130 who became doctors. And of course, many engineers and, and other professionals. So, uh, yes. So it was rigorous it was, academically. You uh, didn't slouch. <laughs> and so good grades would have been uh, something to seek. Right. Do you remember any particular teachers as being standouts or who, who mentored you in some way or inspired well, you? I can remember uh, uh, Mr. Harms who had to leave our physics class teaching when the war started because he was German and uh, was uh, not allowed to teach. And um, we had an uh, English and French teacher, Miss Hatties, that we all uh, really liked very much. And um, I remember, um, um, I think she was a math teacher, Miss Miller. You may, some of my <laughs> co peers might be a little different on these memories because I'm not really sharp on, on the final memories, but we did have a lot of fun. Did you stay in your own campus town group or did you integ integrate, so to speak, with downtown kids? That's an interesting question because I always thought we integrated and years later when I'm talking with people at reunions and so on, they said, 
the youth college kids were always so stuck up and I was look, trying to remember we were, ran around in a group of 18 girls and about half of them were town girls and the uh, less than half were town uh, fourth ward girls and uh, all, of, all the fourth ward girls fathers were not necessarily faculty and some of the downtown people were faculty so uh, I guess it just depended upon who was doing what. So you ran around as a big group. What did you do for fun in high school? Oh, we just had a lot of fun doing all kinds of things. And uh, uh, we loved slumber parties and potluck suppers and of course celebrated everybody's birthdays. Now I remember there, uh, someone else has told me about a group called the Girl Reserves? Yes, that was a uh, uh, part of the YWCA for high schools and we that was one of the high school activities. Mm -hmm. Girls at that time didn't have an opportunity to be involved in athletics. No. So you didn't have any athletic experience? No, but we did have a pep club uh, that was a cheering section for the football and basketball teams mm -hmm. and uh, of course we had to take physical education classes, so we did play basketball, mm -hmm. and we also played golf and tennis. Tell me a little bit about um, rivalries with other schools outside of Ames. Do you remember anything about I that? I remember Boone and Marshalltown very definitely. Other schools I don't remember. Okay. But. So in football games there was probably a more awareness of those schools. And right. A, a bigger prize yeah, for that victory. I don't remember ever anything about Des Moines mm -hmm. or uh, any of the other schools mm -hmm. around here. For just a moment, I'd like to talk about your home life because um, your father was prominent, obviously, in the engineering uh, college, and your mom probably had a role as his spouse, as kind of the person who helped entertain, would that be right? That's right. In fact, um, my folks had the seniors of the electrical engineering department, every one of them, over for dinner in the springtime in groups of eight. And so we were, so, so I got to serve these young men when I was you know, oh, 12, 13, 14 years old and I got to see these college men. I'm sure that your mom was pretty smart because she knew you'd probably like this task and so she probably taught you some social skills by learning how to serve and that sort of thing. Right. We were, we, well, my brothers also were taught how to wait table and greet people at the door. Mm -hmm. and, um, but she did all the cooking. What a wonderful gift. Every single electrical engineering student had dinner at your house. Until so the glasses got too big. Oh my. And so do you, did this go on then through your high school years as well? They had to stop, well they stopped right after the war when things, when the men came back in droves. Mm -hmm. They could no longer do to it. That. Right. It's just too many. Right. So um, that's a good bridge to talk about how World War II affected your life because you were just graduating from high school? Is well, that? junior and senior year. Junior and senior year. And uh, several of the uh, boys in the, our senior year left school uh, and went into service before they ever finished. Mm -hmm. And when we had our 50th high school reunion, uh, some of them got their diplomas that year, their high school diplomas. A couple of them by that time were doctors, but <laughs> they were tickled because they could go home and put their high school diploma on the wall. <laughs> And how did that affect life in Ames and at the high school with the war on and um, men largely, I mean for the most part, the ones that were young and able were serving and of course there were some that were engaged professionally and they couldn't leave, but how did that affect life? For you? Well, um, the, the, at the uh, college there were uh, huge groups brought in, of, you know, there was an electric electrician school and a cooking school and a couple of other uh, technical schools of uh, 
first mates or privates, depending upon what's Army or Navy, and they lived in all the college dorms in many of the sororities and fraternities. So um, we were exposed to people in uniform all the time. Mm -hmm. And the university was the center for this because these people needed educating on certain kinds of aspects of military life so that they could go and help serve their units. Is right. that right? Yeah, they were okay. there anywhere from two weeks to mm -hmm. maybe six months mm -hmm. in different training areas. Okay. I'm, I'm going to ask you to reflect on something, either as your grade school years or the, your high school years, because often when I ask this question, it helps people know what sort of value systems might have been going on. And the question is this, what did First of all, we'll take grade school children. What did grade school children do that might get them into trouble? I, grade school, I cannot think of anything that would... We just didn't do things. <laughs> I can think of plenty in high school. <laughs> Let's go there then. Well, we uh, didn't always go to school as we were supposed to. Uh, we... Um, borrowed, in quotes, our parents' cars occasionally, when, uh, of course, with gas rationing, a, a part of the time we were not running around, but we had a lot of fun, um, just, just being nothing bad, it was just we had a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And um, what would happen if somebody got caught, say, missing school? Well, the school took care of it. <laughs> We, we, they, there was retention or detention classes and school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. Well, I always like to say um, if there's anything you'd like to tell me about growing up in Ames that I haven't asked you or that um, was important for understanding what it was like for being here during those years, uh, this is your chance to tell me. Well, I think Ames was the place to grow up in and I would still recommend it as a place for young families, it is a wonderful place. The um, education possibilities here was marvelous. Being able to go to the university and uh, go to lectures and so on as youngsters, to have a feel for how important higher education is was very outstanding. And um, it was exciting to be able to go to the college uh, football and basketball games and band concerts and other things on the campus. Well, Martha, thank you for sharing your thoughts with me today. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you.